She also, also holds doctorate from Dr. Baba Sabamedkar, Marathwada University, Aurangabad. Her specialization is pharmacognosy. At present, she is working as assistant professor in Puna College, Pune. She attended several national and international conferences seminars and workshops. She published several papers in well-known journals. She is a life member of Indian Science Congress Association. She is also a member of registered NGO, Vision Foundation, Pune, that helps and guides youth in pursuing higher education, placement, and provide medical help food and clothing to the needy. She got Best Teacher Award in 2003 at Darul Hijr International School, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. About her social work, I am saying that Kadam Kadam Par Uphale Utar Karayenge, Tere Naseeb Ke Sare Utar Karayenge, Sahara Ben Kar Niklo Tumbe Saharo Ka Tere Madat Ko Parishte Utar Karayenge, now, may I request Dr. Afrin Abrad Ahmed to join us and share her view about pandemic COVID-19, preparedness and preventive measures. Yes, thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for your brief and in yes, welcome. welcome. Thank you, ma'am, for the introduction you gave. I'm really honored. I'm thankful to the patron, Honorable Ansari Nihal Ahmed, sir, Chairman, JAT Trust. I'm thankful to President and Principal, Dr. Ansari. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am, you are audible. Yes, and uh, am I the host? Uh, no, ma'am, you can share the screen. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I thank Principal Dr. Ansari Harun Ramzan, sir, and Dr. Yahya Khan for giving me this opportunity. It's a great opportunity. I, being from a women's college, studied at a women's college. I'm very glad to speak with young minds, young girls who will be listening to me. I'll share my screen and then we'll begin. <laughs> yes, my screen is visible. Zen <laughs> now. I suppose my screen is visible. Yes, madam. Yes, visible. Thank you. So the topic for the webinar is something which is very current. The pandemic preparedness mm -hmm. and preventive measures. Mm -hmm. I'll be speaking especially on the role of youth in preparedness as well as response. You know, March is a month when you start preparing for your exams you're about to give your finals, your semesters, and you are in so much of pressure already. 
with you the pressure lies on your parents your teachers your college school whatever because we look up to the youth for our future for a safe future for many developmental strategies we are going to give our uh, burden on your shoulders so march is a month of preparations but all of a sudden everything came to a halt and this halt was due to a very very tiny microorganism which we call as the corona virus this is not new this has been prevailing amongst us since many years but we are facing a threat because of a very new strain which has led to a pandemic which has brought down the entire world into a lockdown this was a scare it gave rise to anxiety we were facing a new exam right children were in the middle of the exams and all of a sudden there was no exam the next day they were worried about their future some were into their last year of degrees be it engineering bsc msc pg courses and all of a sudden they were struck with this pandemic their future was in the dark there was a lot of anxiety fear all over it's not only within our country this is a global pandemic but yet in the past 6 months of lockdown facing all these fears lots of difficulties loss of lives loss of livelihood you can say and we are into uh, a ray of hope is in the form of a vaccine it is already being administered in the european countries uk etc even though we have a vaccine the we are into the unlock phase that does not mean covid is over it is yet prevailing it is lurking out we are in danger even now even after 6 to 7 months of facing this pandemic bravely we can of course defeat it we can defeat it together with efforts from each and every individual person because this is a disease which is easily transmitted wherever transmission comes it is every single person's responsibility to fight against it help each other help our community help the government the country to tide over this huge crisis so these are some facts i won't go into the detail of the corona virus we'll try to see how we can face this how the youth will cope up with covid-19 so globally last which i got on 15th of december there are more than 7 crore confirmed cases and there are 16 lakh more than 16 lakh death reports by the who this is a global situation now too so even though we have a lot unlocked down we are into the unlock phase you can move around but the government responsibility is over the responsibility now lies into our hands and more into the hands of the youth yes the government had prepared itself to fight for this emergency face this emergency it tried its best to notify everyone to respond to give us the best medical facilities the best medicines the best care so that we could recover from this emergency that is called as preparedness planning which was done very well by our government and under the instructions of who yes we have long term care facilities at the national level at the state level wherein their priority was to give maximum facilities to residents so that this disease does not go to the next level to the community transmission level india at present is not yet into the community transmission level uh, if you go to the who website we are into a better phase compared to the rest the europe especially so the main procedures and resources which were done were <coughs> ipc 
IPC is inf infection prevention and control. <coughs> the government has supplied PPE kits, protective, I'm so sorry. Hello. Yes, sir. Ma'am, uh, ma uh, your PPT is not uh, open. Please, now, please. now. No, no, ma'am. I'll share it again. Now? Ah, now it is open. Now it is shared. So yeah. the government, the first stage was to provide proper equipment and training to the health uh, care workers, the government servants, the administrative entire setup. And there was a complete surveillance for COVID-19 patients. There was huge testing randomly done in places which were called as, if you remember the containment zones, you had red zones, yellow zones, green zones. <clears throat> So there was severe testing done and to identify where actually this was more localized and concentrated. And accordingly, medical care facilities were given. So this was a very great step taken by the local authorities and the national authorities. So the main stay of IPC, that is infection prevention and control, the very first step which is in the hands of the administration, what they chalk out for the entire country, the state and at the city, local level, corporation level. Like when do you have lockdowns? When do you ease them out? How would you uh, try to supply the regular uh, daily use commodities to people so that they do not have a shortfall of all these things? So all that comes into administrative measures. Then fourth, it is into the hands of the public. How to maintain physical distancing to keep the virus away from you, from your family. And then come to your personal hygiene level. Wash your hands continu continuously. And then use proper protection equipments. So basically, you have to make choices which can save your life. You can save the lives of people with you. And that is how you can help fight against this deadly disease. You can fight with, with this only if you know about it well. You know about it well, you can take care of yourself. If you take care of yourself, you'll be able to take care of others and pass on this further to people. You learn to be responsible and whatever energies you have, utilize them to develop strategies in such a way that you can sensitize the youth and help in the development of community. So I'll pass on some basic information, most of which you already might be knowing, but you need to be told again and again, if you have a patient at home, how would you save yourself? The first thing is you isolate the person. Isolate is a word which hurts you, but that is the truth which you need to face. Isolate the person in a separate room. If that is not possible, keep him away, him or her, I'm sorry, in such a place where you can maintain a distance from that person, it should be proper ventilation in the room as well as your entire house where you're sharing spaces. Hmm? The, if you enter the room where the ill person has been kept aloof, you need to wear a mask. The same way the person also has to wear a mask. And the most important, what you usually do when the person is ill is you do not allow visitors Hence, you do not allow visitors at home. Limit the number of caregivers at home also. Do not try to involve many people 
for supplying food, water, medicines to the ill person. Any one person in the house who is healthy enough can take the responsibility and use proper uh, equipment to protect himself or herself, all the caregivers, and then enter the person's room. The person needs care because he's totally, uh, the anxiety level is at a very higher level. So you cannot isolate that person completely. He needs care, proper food, but most importantly, you take care of yourself so that you can take care of others. The ill person's uh, spoons, glasses, cups, plates should not be shared. That's very important. You need to keep your emotions aside. You need to be very, very practical so that that person also recovers well and he or she is not a um, threat to the other people around in the house. So do not share utensils, what the person is using. And if at all you need to use them, please clean them well, disinfect them, disinfect the entire area which has been used by that person and take care of hygiene, personal hygiene. In the sense, wash your hands each time you attend to the ill person, each time you handle his or her utensils or whatever things have been used. If the toilet is being used, uh, properly clean it, use disinfectants. Hmm? Whenever you feel your hands have become very dirty, please wash them with soap. Each time using a sanitizer is, of course, economically and scientifically not okay with your skin. So you go in for using soap and water. Whenever you sneeze or the ill person has sneezed, let, teach them. You learn it yourself and then teach them how to sneeze in a flexed elbow or use a disposable tissue and take utmost care to dispose of that tissue. Whatever waste has been uh, generated by that ill person, please, <coughs> before disposal, please pack it in a proper closed bag and then put it in a closed bin. You've been seeing this again and again on TV, but yet this needs to be told again and again. There are people who are breaking rules because of the unlock period. And that is why we need to revise things again and again. If at all you are asymptomatic, yet you could be a threat to your family. Mild symptoms, but you do not feel ill. You are young, you can cope up, you, you maybe have a better immunity, but someone in your family might not be that immune. So there are chances you will transfer this in the form of small liquid aerosols or droplets from your nose or mouth when you're sneezing, when you're talking, it could pass on to maybe <coughs> a grandparent or maybe your mother who has some uh, special uh, conditions such as hypertension or diabetes. So you are unsafe for your family. So you need to take care. Now, if a person is hospitalized, he is uh, released from isolation or from the hospital or if at all isolated at home, only and only after considering how much time that person has spent from the time he has been detected with symptoms and till no symptoms are seen. And after proper COVID test results negative, only then the person can move around in the house or can be brought back home after hospitalization. Now, in the unlock, you are again the marriage season, which was somehow locked for six to seven months, everything has opened up. So you might be receiving invitations. Now, when you receive an invitation, what should be you doing? As a uh, literate person, you're doing your graduation, post-graduation. That is my uh, spectators now, I suppose. So you should be responsible enough 
if you need to attend a public gathering or you need to arrange a public gathering, what should be done? There are guidelines given by WHO wherein a risk-based approach has been given. You try that they should prevent transmission of the virus from within people. Where you will be holding that particular gathering is important. How will you make the environment safer for you as well as the participants who are coming? Or the best way is if it is not that important, you cancel the planned event. For example, this webinar, this should have been something done in person, but now with times keeping safety in mind priority, we are going for webinars, right? You can try to find out some other way to deal with situations. So always check with your local authority. If you have to plan an event, make a list, minimum list, choose outdoor venues so that there is uh, lots of ventilation. And if at all, you have to go in for indoor venue, see that it is properly ventilated. The people who are coming are totally dependent on you for their health, yes? So minimize the crowd and see that the entry and exit points are such that people enter um, comfortably. There is no staggering. There is no crowd. And you need to provide all necessary equipments such as for hygiene. For example, you need to provide hand sanitizers, tissues, water, drinking water, portable water should be made available. And you see that distance has been maintained. People use masks. You need to tell them before that these have to be followed. These rules have to be followed. And if suppose you are invited, if you can avoid, you're not feeling well, please avoid going there. And stick to the basic preventive measures if you are attending a function. You met your friend after seven months. Okay, you are at least getting to see him or her. It's enough. Maintain a distance of one meter. Wear a mask because it's a crowd. And you do try uh, get close. That's human nature. But try to avoid, keep these things. This should always be in, at the back of your mind. You are yet facing a danger and you need to take precautions. Cover your sneeze. Carry your own tissue papers, your handkerchiefs. Avoid touching your nose, eyes, and mouths constantly. And wash your hands and take care of yourself. Now, even though you know all these things, you're getting so much of information on TV, on your WhatsApp, yet you find that some of your friends are not adhering to these rules. So being a friend, you explain to them the importance of following these rules. This is not something which should uh, um, come into your uh, friendship. Do not get into an argument, but try to change their mind. Since it's your friend, you know their nature and accordingly try to uh, tell them whatever you're doing is for their better and for their family's safety. Use a mask, but how do you use it? Clean your hands before and after using a mask. And if you need to remove it for some time, keep it in a very clean bag, which you carry with you. And if it's a fabric mask, wash it well. And if it's a medical mask, which has to be uh, disposed after use, please wrap it up properly and throw it and dispose it in a uh, closed bin. I am again repeating it in a closed bin. Always use masks which are without valves. This is the latest uh, information by WHO. Now with all this, so much of information around, we have been exposed to um, information of all sorts in the form of videos, captions, jokes even on the, unfortunately on COVID-19. But do you think all of this is reliable? Some of it can lead to misinformation and 
this information to all information is not information it could be misleading and this entire flood of information which you see around you in every form is called as infodemic this is another you are facing a pandemic with that you are facing something called as infodemic the one in red shows how an information propagates you try to be the gray arrows wherein you analyze what information you are getting and after you try to ask yourself is it necessary to share this how authentic is it find out from where this is coming that is called as practicing information hygiene whatever you are getting access the source who shared it what is the actual source from where all this information is being used now for example this slide clearly shows you this is through the who <coughs> which is authentic at times headlines are such you feel like uh, this is the ultimate truth and you try to believe it they are sensational headlines but try to go beyond that find out the real intention behind that a uh, headline it could be misleading because information is something which is accurate for example covid 19 it stands for corona virus and caused by sars covid virus 2 this is something authentic on the other hand false information is something which has been created but it does not have the intention of hurting others but the very third alarming thing is disinformation disinformation is created with an intention of profiting from it from the cause you take some profits it could be advertisers it could be some uh, medical practitioners there could be any amount of people who could try to gain something or the other from a particular information and this could harm you it could harm a group of people an organization and to a very higher level even a country so this information generally has an agenda behind it so you need to follow these guidelines identify the author you can go online check the author's credibility see if they are real and only then you pass on this information check the date it's very important you get messages a person needs plasma be positive but when was it required check the date yes do not just pass it on you might know that person has recovered maybe two months earlier but the message is yet passing on on whatsapp groups examine the supporting evidence try to find out stories Uh, related to that particular message or information and see if it's authentic think whether uh, you can really trust the person from whom you are receiving and to whom you are passing on this information so there are many uh, websites especially by the who and the government of india wherein you can easily go and find out about this but not every information would be uh, permanent because we are yet trying to learn about this virus trying to know about how its virulence how it can be controlled we are learning about new symptoms coming up from uh, european countries so this information will surely keep on changing it's up to you your judgment how you authenticate it always remember the three c's stay away from crowded places and uh, close contact settings for example you are going to a you shouldn't be going to a multiplex or a mall or a cinema house but if at all you go wherever there is co close contact settings please be careful that way and find an enclosed spaces where there is poor ventilation please try to avoid these are high risk places where many factors overlap hmm? you are in close proximity there's not enough ventilation you do not know who is a carrier over there 
in spite of all this lockdown, you are staying at home, you are bored. Try to do, uh, take up new hobbies, play games, learn music, maybe what you couldn't do because of your studies. Do those things. Take up a book, go through it, learn music, learn dance, do gardening. It's so uh, relaxing to your mind. Or if you have that instinct to help the community, you can get into small community service groups, NGOs you could help out, or the best is you could uh, serve your community through your college. Chalk out some small programs wherein you could distribute food, distribute groceries, uh, prepare masks and uh, give them to the needy, give them to the health workers in your community, the ones who come to pick up garbage, they are prone to this virus and they are helping us in this. So try to help them out, but at the same time, take care of yourself. You can get your friends together because anxiety uh, might lead to depression. So what you need is you try to overcome this anxiety, depression by engaging into something or the other. Keep a diary, write down your thoughts, express your feelings. You could become a poet. You can uh, continue your drawing, painting, and try to revive your mental health. Breathing exercise should be done regularly. And uh, you have lots and lots of authentic uh, yoga practitioners which help you uh, get into better shape being at home. Yes. Some of the other activity and the most important, of course, uh, the females are away from it, but smoking, alcohol and drugs do not take help of these to overcome your emotional uh, stress. These are not at all helpful. These are temporary and these are going to affect your health further. Instead, you stay connected with your friends your relatives, which are far off, you can connect them on the internet. You can talk to them live. You have technology. Utilize it in a proper way. Make a proper routine to get up daily on time. Eat healthy food. And if at all, in spite of all this, if you have a mental, uh, you are going and in sinking deeper into depression and anxiety, please talk to a health worker or a counselor. Counselor could be your close friend, your family member, anyone. Because if you do not take care of your mental health, that could cause a problem further. De-stress, relax. Even though movements are restricted, every uh, those who are working from home especially, this even comes to me. When we are sitting, making our PowerPoint presentations, we sit for long hours. Take a break from the sitting. Three to five minutes of physical movement, stretching would release the muscle strain and also improve mental health. So basically, the main, uh, what you say is, nuska jo hai, health theek rakhne ke liye is to keep fit. It will uh, help you as youth to have a better fitness in your life further. You work out now and that will reduce the risk of diseases in your later life. This is very, very essential. Try to keep fitness. That will reduce depression also. And for adults, your parents, your uncles, you can strengthen uh, Go for strengthening exercises, climb the stairs, little, little exercises within home. And of course, enjoy with your family and friends. Now, COVID has taught us a lot. It gave us a shock. It took away lots of lots of lives, thousands of lives. It has hampered economy and led to the worst recession. There is loss of employment. The Countries have lost income, but, and uh, there is a ray of hope. There is a silver lining to this, wherein 
we are trying to go back to the normal we are trying to develop strategies uh, methods to protect ourselves and improve economy because we cannot afford to face a disaster again on such a large scale so what we need to do is to get back to the normal we need to think of a brighter future uh, help our community and the local authorities to tide over this pandemic it has been seen pollution levels have also been dropped and air has become cleaner in spite of this scare there are a few things which have really shown hopes use of uh, digital technology we can talk to each other we can uh, there are so many ways in which technology has helped us communicating with each other now everyone has learned to pay their bills from their um, phones that's a very good way in which uh, the pandemic has helped us hmm? you uh, there are medical consultations where you can go online talk to your doctor and get medication at home hmm? and if you really uh, the youth you need to come out you need now your life a long way to go ahead so you need to slowly slowly come out and speak and try to uh, strategize some plans for a better future there are people who are coming together and they uh, are trying to uh, put pressurize the local uh, governments and administrations so that their future is safe covid is a zoonotic disease hmm, which was basically in animals before it came into the humans this is a fact hmm? many such diseases can further infect us 1980 onwards there are many infectious disease outbreaks which have been hitting the humans very hard and somewhere in the long run it has been seen that many human activities such as deforestation pollution of all sorts which has led to environmental degradation has exposed us to the risk of these emerging infectious diseases so we start from the core we go back to nature we try to go for a if you need a better future we take care of environment first we need to take strict actions at the personal level community level and national and global level where you come together we can even demand action from our governments so that we can we it's a right to breathe clean air and to have a better future on this planet to make this planet a livable one so you all need to come together the youth especially and that is why i'm here to talk to you all the this is a prescription or you can say the thoughts of the who director where he clearly said the pandemic is a reminder of the intimate and delicate relationship between people and the planet any efforts to make our world safer are doomed to fail unless they address the critical interface between people and pathogens and the existential threat of climate change that is making our earth less habitable in one sentence he has spoken a lot he has described our relation between us our environment which also has microorganisms in it and how we affect each other so at your level try to preserve nature you learn this in your evs during your ug courses as well as pg courses promote sustainable development pay your taxes well because a lot of it goes for the development of our cities so if you need a healthy environment you also need to uh, pay your taxes well hmm? 
so that cities are built in a proper way or you have proper waste disposable disposal systems yes so it is not only something for yourself it is something for the entire community for the entire uh, globe so coming together at the global level will surely give us a healthy environment it will promote health and uh, we should try to bring the communities together of course this is coming to a very uh, greater level at and uh, the youth especially are coming together in many countries so that they can help each other face this pandemic and we can build a better future a cleaner earth and this will pass to that is the thing we can hope for and pray and uh, that is how i end my note here at a very positive note i end my speech here thank you thank you sir thank you ma'am uh, for your uh, wonderful session what are the preparedness and what we have to do uh, in the age of uh, covid 19 conditions so i am very now the session is for uh, questions if you have any questions i am asking to participant if you have any questions then uh, you can unmute yourself and ask the question to the ma'am or uh, type your questions in the chat box so uh, we are also uh, sending the link of uh, feedback form of uh, this uh, our webinar and now i am very much thankful to dr afrin ma'am on a single telephonic call she accepted our invitation and we are very much thankful on behalf of jt trust behalf of our principal and all our my colleague so thank you very much to all now thank the uh, sessions are been over uh, we are sending link feedback link to in the chat and also in the group and those who are not received then they can contact directly so thank you very much all now the sessions are over nahi kar raha ana kai dikh kar dikh tumara vaat kam hone ke sir is pe nahi nahi do teen line pe नहीं ना भेजो ना भेजो भेजो टेक्स्ट करो वाट व्हाट्सअप सर सबका बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया सबका अच्छा तुम लोग आगे ग्रुप चलो खाना खा लो Thank you.